Does the dark mode toggle work? <laughs> Look at that. GPT-5 is here. And in this video, I'm going to show it to you. And we're going to take a look at it. We're going to see what it can do. And we're going to see if it can actually build something. So enough talking. Let's do it. All right. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. And let's make our agent real big. We can do that by maximizing the sidebar here. All right. There it is, GPT-5. What is up, GPT-5? Now, OpenAI says that this model is better at reasoning, and we've seen very similar results to indicate that that is correct. And you'll see that it thinks for a minute there and says, hey, I'm ready when you are. So now let's ask it to do a few things. And just uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to speed up the model interactions here. And that's just so that you don't have to watch the model think. So the first thing I want to do is test how well it does a tool calling. And to do that, I'm just going to ask it what tables are in my database. But before I do that, so that you understand why it should be able to answer that, I have some instructions here that define what kind of project I'm in. And this one right here that says always check the E and V file for database connection information. And additionally, I have the MCP server for Postgres, which is provided by the Postgres SQL extension. And so it's going to need to figure all that out. And I'm not going to give it any other information than that. So let's just ask it and see what happens here. What tables are in my database? So in this case, GPT-5 is going to have to put everything together to figure out what database do I have? What's the connection info and how does it connect? Let's see how it does. All right, so interesting. It did a search of the project looking for database configs, and it found, it looks like it found and figured out that it needed to call the MCP server to list my servers, which it did. It got those back. Uh, it was then able to connect to localhost. So it's connected successfully there. And then it's fetching all tables and schemas for the default database here. That's not what I need. I actually specified what database, but let's see if it can continue on and figure out exactly what database it needs to look at. Okay, so it finished and it found the database. Uh, so quite interesting. You can see it's just sort of reasoning and working through here. It's enumerating databases. It's gonna connect directly to this particular database that I need, fetches all the tables and brings that back. So now it knows what tables I have and what columns are in those tables. So. Now what I want to do is put it through something a little bit more difficult. So this project here that, that I have is an Astro JS project. It's a web project. And what it is, is this site right here. Now it's not going to look exactly like this because I'm not going to tell GPT-5 how it should design. The general idea is that you can enter in links to different websites and then you get one URL and you can share this URL with everyone. Now, this is the application we're going to ask GPT-5 to build. And the way we're going to ask it to build it is with this product requirements document. So let's look at this for just a second here. I'll add a link to this so you can use this yourself. But you can see at the top that it gives a very vague sort of description of what it actually is. But then it goes through and defines user stories and expected behaviors and outcomes. As a user, I want to be able to start a new empty list so I can begin adding URLs this system should be able to provide a clear way for the user to do that. And it just sort of continues on and defines everything that the user should be able to do. So we're going to give this to GPT-5 and we're going to see if it can build this application on its own. So let's do that. I'm just going to say build this app and then we're just going to pass in the PRD. Now I'm about to hit enter. And we're going to see what's going to happen here. And while this thing cooks, I'm literally going to go and have a meal. And I will meet you back here when this is done. And we will see the result together. Let's go. All right, we're done. 
Uh, I just got back from dinner and let's see what we got. All right, so we're returning an error here. Uh, this is good because reasoning models are supposed to be quite good at debugging things like this. So let's copy this right out and just paste it right back in here and let GPT-5 go to work and see if it can fix its own error. All right, so this is what it created for us, which admittedly doesn't look great, but this is really good because it gives us a chance to test some things here. So it, we can add links, we can create a new list. All of this appears to be working. And if we refresh, it is persisted in the database. So it's basically built the minimum amount of application required here to be functional based on the product requirements document. Now, now we get to see how good GPT-5 is at design. All right, let's try it. So let's come over here and we'll go ahead and keep everything here and let's just add a prompt and have it redesign this site. All right, so we had to work through one additional area there, but now we have a working application. We go to the home page. There's a landing page that actually looks pretty good. Um, I mean, that's that's way better than 4.1 does the design. I think we can make this better though. Let's just tell it uh, to punch up the design, uh, do something creative, add some nice poppy colors. Let's give it one more prompt. Let it iterate again, see if it can make this even better. Let's give it a shot. All right, so it's punched up our design. Let's expand this a little bit and go ahead and look at what this page actually looks like now. I mean, that's pretty good. I, you know, I don't know what it's what's up with AIs and these boxes. It really, they all really like these boxes for some reason. But this looks nice. There's this nice gradients. There's these uh, subtle glows happening. Um, it's even come up with all the text here on the page. I mean, this is really nice. So let's just try this here. See how this works. This looks like we can edit these. This whole interface works. We could add metadata scraping to get the open graph information. But what I'd really like to do here is see if we can add the ability to reorder these links by drag and drop, because that's not easy to do. So let's go back. Let's do one more prompt with GPT-5 and see if it can drag and drop links. Let's give it a shot. All right, so it says it's done and you can see in the tasks here, it says it added API reorder support. So it had to add the reordering support to the API. So when you actually drag and drop things, it's persisted to the database, the client drag logic, the visual styling, and then it built and verified. It says it's ready to go. Let's see if that's actually the case. So here we are. Looks like we have drag handles. If I put my mouse over, I get a little hand. Does this actually work? Drag Google below, open AI, look at that. And then here's the real test. If we refresh, does it save? It looks like, yes, it does. And I think we can even improve this further. We just need to go back and iterate and improve the drag logic here. Uh, we can improve the UI a lot. So that's kind of a first look at GPT-5. Let's go through a few other things here though, uh, as we're looking at this. So we can see that GPT-5 is able to to, to really take on pretty big tasks. And um, it's it looks like it doesn't try to do too much. It kind of does just enough. And then it comes back to you and wants you to do the rest. So uh, as you could see before, it built the app and then it wanted us to say, okay, now go ahead and style it. And then it built the drag and drop and now we need to go and iterate on the drag and drop, which I kind of like. I don't want the AI to do too much, so I'm a fan. As you saw me going through, you may have seen that there's a to-do list in my VS Code and you're thinking, my VS Code doesn't have a to-do list. Well, first of all, you should be on Insiders. And then secondly, it's a tasks view here and I will leave the setting that you need to enable this in the description for this video. I will also leave a link to this project so you can check it out on GitHub as well as the product requirements document so you can test this yourself. So that's GPT-5, a first look. This is what it built for us. I mean, that looks, it looks really good. And uh, oh, last thing, last thing. Does the dark mode toggle work? <laughs> look, look at that. I mean, that's wild. I'm impressed.
I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And as always, happy coding.